Southampton became the home of the transit in 1972, though the former Spitfire factory alongside Eastleigh Airport had been making Ford parts since the 1950s. Ford called it a supervan. This one was quicker than most. As for the future, who knows what supervan will tackle next? Here, it is a rally support vehicle. The Transit became an icon, a household name, something no other van has achieved. Here was Ford's advice to salesmen. Ideally, your presentation will take the prospective buyer through the product features and customer benefits in a logical and concise manner. The way the van was promoted has changed a little over the years, too. Rejecting outright the company's offer, in 1978, a strike over pay paralysed the Swathling factory for nine weeks. Bill Chandler remembers it vividly. It was absolutely terrible. We had no money coming in for our families. It cost us a fortune. And I believe it brought down the Labour government, which in turn brought the uh, Tory government into power. At its peak, more than 4,000 people worked here. Over the last 20 years, the number dwindled steadily partly because robots took the place of people. You, you spent more time with your work friends than you did your family. Um, so um, you needed everybody to rely on. Financially it was good. It was the only way to earn a really decent living for my family. And that was what was really important. The new Ford Transit! The Transit van has been through more regenerations than Doctor Who. By the 21st century, there was air conditioning, a CD player, and a mobile phone holder. White van man was becoming grey van gentleman. The transit, a barometer of a changing economic and social climate. As that climate became tougher, Ford built a new transit factory in Turkey, where labor was cheaper. The Southampton factory's days were numbered. More than two million vehicles were built here. For more than 40 consecutive years, Southampton's Transit was Europe's best-selling van.